Hey, Dave LaCalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today we're going to talk about B58 and S58 spring kits. What is the deal? Check it out. So what we did was we took a B58 and an S58 cylinder head, bone stock, no valve job, took the stock valves in it, and we checked stem height, we checked spring height, and we used a OEM spring kit. We used three different aftermarket spring kits, and we compared them all to see which one reigned supreme. And we also wanted to see a lot of guys are taking the B58 spring kits and they're putting in an S58. And there's only one manufacturer actually makes a kit that's specific to the S58. And we wanted to see, is the heights change? Because people are doing it, they're not measuring it, they're just sticking them in there. Is there an actual advantage to doing this? Now, I just want to note that we're not going to name names of any of the manufacturers because, guys, I work with all these people, I see these people, I go to trade shows with these people. I'm friends with all of the manufacturers and I just don't want to single somebody out, even though uh, sometimes the facts or my ideas or the theories that go behind all this stuff uh, dictates that their spring or what have you is not the right one to buy, at least for certain applications. Maybe they do have a space for them, but people are just, because it's for an S58 or a B58, they're just sticking it in there and thinking it works know that it really needs to match your um, like what you're doing with it and you can't just buy it just because it says it's for your engine because that's just a recipe for failure i'm not really here to dictate what you buy i'm just here to educate you on maybe what you can look for on your own do your own research and you will see uh, if you watch these videos maybe you watch this a couple times you'll kind of gain uh, you just go on these people's websites and you might see what i'm talking about so one thing that was across the board, what we noticed is all of them, all the aftermarket spring kits, what they had to offer was a distance to coil bind. That is what you gain. On any kit, you're gonna gain, um, you're gonna be able to run more lift and you won't have to worry about it because there is room in the spring. In the OEM spring, you cannot do that because it's already almost, it's like two millimeters to bind. It's so close to coil bind that if you were to add lift, you would coil bind or you would break the spring and it's just not made for doing what you're trying to do with it. So now we're on the camshaft, we're gonna um, maybe dive into that just for a second, is that you can't run more lift on the, um, on the intake side because of the Vano system. Because of that system, we're already at the edge of the rocker, of the roller, and um, you can't run more lift. So if you can't run more lift, kind of you can run more lift on the exhaust but you can't run more lift on the intake and uh, that gives it less of an advantage uh, across the board but nonetheless it's there for you should be noted while we're on the subject of lift that if you go on all these guys website you'll notice that they have lift listed on their camshaft and what i've seen is that their rocker ratio is different so there's so many variables to measuring a rock or a, a lift because you don't know where they measured this rocker ratio at. And you're gonna be multiplying the lobe lift times the rocker ratio to get your absolute lift. So you're kind of, um, you really don't know. You really don't know where they're gonna be at, but I can tell you that there's not much room to put more lift in it. That's the only thing I can tell you. Another thing that all the manufacturers seem to not agree on is a spring height. So. OEM is 40 or 50 thousandths difference between each intake and exhaust. And there's one manufacturer who did the same. And then there's such a variance between all of them uh, that although it'll still fit, it's just not the same. And you should measure spring height before and you install this stuff and make sure that you are installing it to the spec that the manufacturer wants. Now you guys who are installing the B58 kit in the S58, um, speaking of math, right? This whole thing is kind of about math. The spring kits actually are, they work, but the spring height in the S58 is different than the B58. In the B58, the spring is taller in the head and the S58, it tightens it up. Is it a lot? Um, it, I guess it, it's less than a millimeter, but it's still something. And you have to know that this is a problem because if you got this cam that you know had a whole bunch of lift in it, you have to know that the distance to coil bind is going to be different in your S58 versus your B58. 
and you should measure this and know that you have enough spring to handle the lift because if you don't measure it, you're gonna get in trouble. So how we figure out open pressure, uh, open pressure is also directly related to your RPM. And what you're gonna do is you take your rate times lift plus the seat pressure gives you your open pressure. And your open pressure is gonna be directly related to RPM and they all kind of correlate. So if you have more seat pressure, but you don't have as much rate and your open pressure is now lacking, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a spring that can't run any more RPM than your OEM or it just, and what I mean about rate is, now rate is how hard it takes to push a spring down. So if we're gonna push it down, and it really goes off of one inch, but since we're not gonna be running one inch, we can do the math and it gives you a rate. So here, you can see here that the spring tester will give us a rate of 188. And uh, the OEM is actually 181. So this spring is, well actually let's put a stock spring in it. So here is a stock OEM spring. It has a little less, see so has less rate. 67 on the seat, 133 open, 57 from bind. Um, and so you can see it will increase the RPM band a little bit, but hold on a whole lot. So what you've seen there was you have a spring that's been used and a spring that has not been used. And there is about 10% difference. And 10% actually can go away as soon as you start this thing up. 10% will go away on any spring on the planet. So it's not just a brand manufacturer. Um, so if they're only gonna make it 10% better than OEM when they it's brand new, it's pretty much gonna be stock as it runs in. And the seat pressure is super important because I like to run a lot of seat pressure and I like to run a lot of seat pressure because we have to worry about controlling the valve. We have boost on the backside of it. We have a lot of things going on and we wanna control the valve. So if you have a spring, again, it's like 10% better. Um, and we're talking about the spring pressures. If the spring pressure is only 10% or 15% better than stock, it's only gonna be marginally better to on the bench, but then when you put it on the car, it's really not gonna run that much better. Is it worth that $1,000 that you're gonna spend for any of these spring kits and not get any kind of performance gain? You only think you're getting a gain. I also wanna mention how the, this is the OEM springs. Now the OEM spring from the B, uh, B58 and the S58 are the same spring. At least they have the same rate, they have the same pressures. Uh, but what's different is that, that one spring is for the intake, this is this one here, and uh, one's for the exhaust. You'll notice that on the top here, they are different sizes and they have this stripe here that's different. And that's how you can tell the, the difference between the two. Now, the reason why they do that is because the spring height is actually different between the two, between intake and exhaust. The spring height is different, so they make different springs for the different retainer, for a different stem height or stem diameter, and also the different heights. They don't just use one. Unlike the aftermarket springs, all of these, except for one, uses the same OEM height, but uses one spring. They don't change, uh, for whatever reason, they don't change the spring height. They only use one, or they use the kind of back to uh, like 30 thousandths, 40 thousandths, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but they call out on the website only one measurement. So you actually, again, you have to measure this stuff. You can't just pop it in. Now, could you fix it? Yes. All you have to do is shim one side. I'm not gonna tell you what side, but you shim one side and you would have the same, but you would have to measure it to know this. Because as I said, I don't wanna throw anybody under the bus. I'm just here to educate, not dictate. I just wanna show you uh, the differences between these springs because as I said, if you just buy a S58 or B58 spring kit, it does not mean it's good for your application. It also doesn't mean that it is, uh, they're all the same. They're not all created equal. Now what we did do to kind of create an equal setting, we picked a height. So it's 1415 uh, with 10 millimeter lift. Now I will tell you that none of these, um, I should say one of them does, but a lot of times they're not gonna install at 1415. This is a number that Head Games came up with and we're just gonna test them all at that height. It's actually gonna help a, two of the springs because they usually sit up much higher. 
uh, and it's going to be right on for one of two of them. I either way, we just picked a height so everything's equal and you can see that there's vastly differences in these springs. Up first, we are going to do OEM intake spring. And you can see here, oh, that, that rate looks crazy to me. Um, hold on one second. So we're 65 pounds in the seat, 142 open, um, and the bind clearance is 21 thousandths, and you have a spring rate of 196. So that's the intake. Let's move on to the exhaust. This is still OEM. And we are, that, that spring rate looks better. So, or normal, 66 pounds on the seat, 133 open, 61 thousandths away from coil bind, and we're at a spring rate of 169. And um, so now we're gonna try, this is aftermarket, we're gonna call it A. Aftermarket A has 66 pounds on the seat, which is, uh, if you guys remember, that's really close to OEM. 162 open, we're still pretty close to OEM, I guess about 10%, but this is what I was talking about. The distance to coil bind, much different at 141, and we have a spring rate of 244. So you can put a bigger cam, you can run more RPM, uh, but the seat pressure, you can't run more boost. So that is something to think about. Um, this is, we'll call this B. This is aftermarket B. Aftermarket B is 79 pounds on the seat, 152 open. We are 108 from coil bind and we have a spring rate of 184. This is only marginally better than stock. Actually, it was worse than stock on the intake one, but you have a little bit more distance to coil bind. You can run a little bit more boost, uh, but not much. And the 152 open just, you know, you're just kind of wasting your time. You're wasting your time. So here we got C, we'll call this one C and um, 94 on the seat, this is way better, right? 182 open, we are 124 thousandths away from coil bind. But again, that spring rate, we're just, I mean, we're better, but we're not crazy better. 223 is our spring rate, so you can run a little bit more RPM. And now for D, this is the last one we got here. And um, 97 pounds on the seat, 192 open. This is the baddest one we've had here. Uh, 141 from coil bind, and we have a spring rate of 242. So you can run more boost, you can run more RPM, you can run more everything here, uh, more lift if you could fit it, and you're just gonna have an all around better experience. But wait, there's more. Somebody sent us two more spring kits so we could test uh, those two. Now I know we're kind of sticking it in here, and um, we almost posted a video, but we were able to get the last two that are missing from all of our tests and now we have all the s58 b58 spring kits in the market what do these two do all right so we're gonna put the first spring in there see what she does and we are 87 pounds in the c 181 open again this is at 10 millimeter lift for 118 thousandths from coil bind and the spring rate is 236 i would say that is um that's pretty good it's a middle of a road deal now we have the second spring that came in. Now this particular spring, hold on. Oh, look at that. Nice seat pressure, 98, 184 open. We're 110 from bind with a 216 rate, which means uh, you can run a little bit more boost, but you can't run as much RPM with this one. It is what it is. Now, again, we have to remember measure, measure, measure. Now, one of these kits, actually, uh, the if you go on their the manufacturer's website, you'll see that they were defending themselves and saying that people were saying maybe it's wrong. I can personally tell you that their spring height was actually right. So there was only two manufacturers of all of them that install their stuff where they say they are and they installed the same height intake to exhaust. I think that's a very important thing because a lot of people are not doing that, which I think kind of sucks because you're taking the same spring and you're opening it up uh, for no odd reason. Well, let's go over the spring rate. Now I noticed that two of these springs uh, had uh, very light, like the rate was pretty light. And then one was actually worse than RPM. And what this means is r the rate of the spring is gonna control your RPM. And if you have less rate than the 
OEM, because the OEM should be your benchmark, and then you should go up from there, because you want to increase the RPM. But if you are at, RP, at the same rate as OEM or less, but you increase your seat pressure, this means that you can run more boost, but you can't run any more RPM than you originally were. Where is the gain there? There is none, really. Unless that is what you're trying to do. So if it's a road race car and you don't plan on running any more RPM or I should say time attack and you're just going to run an OEM cam and all that stuff, maybe that works for you. But it really wouldn't work for most of the applications that we work on. Now, I know it's kind of open ended to just show you and not tell you which one is the best one. But as I said, I'm not here to dictate. I'm here just to educate and just let you know that just because you purchased it, it it's really just not meant to just go in your cylinder head. Now you could look at our packages and what we sell and um, you can see that I, we don't sell it just because we are brand specific. We sell it because it's maybe the, the better thing for the application of what we are mostly involved in. So we're mostly involved in drag race stuff, big boost, high performance stuff that is gonna see you know a thousand plus. That's our typical customer. So we're gonna gear our stuff towards that. Just wanted to show you that they're wildly different and you're not just gonna get the you know, just plug and play and everything's gonna be the same. It's, it, you really need to talk to somebody or just uh, send it to head games. So while I have you guys' attention, hopefully everybody's still paying attention. What do you guys think about doing an S58 versus B58 on the flow bench and which one flows better? Tell me in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. All right, that does it for me today. I hope you like my little spiel. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, share this video. I think you guys should probably share this in some of those groups on Facebook uh, because the education really needs to be there. There's a lot of guys just, it's a blind leading the blind and nobody knows what the hell's going on. And um, um, if you think about anything you guys wanna see on these platforms or others, please comment below. Love to hear from you, toodles.